Free speech facing some big challenges on college campuses as government intervention against offensive speech finds growing favor among millennials, leading to sit-ins like this one that you are looking at that happened at Princeton University and other demonstrations spreading across the country to show support for the protests at the University of Missouri. In a new Pew Research poll, 40% of American millennials aged 18 to 34 are likely to support government prevention of public statements that are offensive to minorities. Many translate that as curbing their free speech. Deneen Borelli, chief political correspondent of Conservative Review and a Fox News contributor, Basil Smichel Jr., president and founder of Basil Smichel Associates, an adjunct professor at Columbia University and executive director of the New York State Democratic Party. Welcome to both of you. Thank Great you. to have Morning. you both here. We've talked about this a lot, um, but this issue of, you know, when you've got 40% of millennials saying, you know, it's okay once in a while in certain circumstances to tell people that they have lost their right to free speech. You okay with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it cuts both ways it's a slippery slope and once you do it for some where do you where do you stop but I do think it's a little more nuanced than that I think what uh, Millennials are saying and this is this there's some interesting research on this Millennials are a generation that for the first time in history can get more information um, out there in the world rather than having to go to their parents to get information and what that says to me is that there's a lot out there that young people are learning about history that hadn't been taught before that isn't being passed down from generation to generation there's also and, a lot of stuff on the internet well, that's not correct well, well, which is that, that, that might be true, but the reality, but the thing is, to me is that you have a lot of these young people who are becoming active, who can connect to each other, and uh, they're rightly questioning um, how we've lionized leaders in our country historically. Yeah. And I think that's an appropriate. Yeah, uh, I, I appropriate mean, response. you're probably re referring to the Woodrow Wilson uh, picture at Princeton, which is what we saw cropping up here. We had the Halloween costumes that might be offensive to some, that caused a huge brouhaha at um, at Yale. Um, you know, when you, you take a look at what's going on here, you know, one of the things that strikes me, Deneen, is, and I, you know, we're doing all these stories on ISIS, we're looking at what's going on in Paris, I think, are these kids living in a bubble? Yeah. That this is what they're concerned about at college universities? Yeah. These are the things that they are so passionate about that they want everyone to do a sit-in over? Right, well, I, I see it as PC gone wild. And you have to keep in mind the number of students, young adults and children, who have been indoctrinated with this nonsense, Martha. And clearly, these individuals want more government intervention. I mean, this is an affront on our freedom of speech. And what they really need to recognize is that it, it, our country is free. We stand on the principles of freedom. Freedom of speech is one of the pillars of our country. What we need is less government, especially when it comes to speech. Well, no, but I'm struck, you're, you, you spend time uh, obviously at Columbia working, and I have a daughter in college, it's like, I feel like college, because these are the things that they are fired up about. Sure. This is what oh. they are focused on. And you look at what's going on in the world, and I think, gosh, you know, you, you would, it, and I think that in, in some ways, they hearken back to, you know, the 60s and the riots that were going on in college campuses. Those were about the Vietnam War. Those were about something that was going on in the larger world around them that they were very aware of. And this is what I worry about with these college kids, that, that they're living in a, in a little bubble. Well, no, I, I would disagree. I, do, I think that these college, uh, these young people in college are incredible. They're more aware than we were when we went to school. So I don't take away them. Uh, I, I think they can multitask. They can certainly fight for uh, what they believe in on campus and still be connected to the larger world. But I also think it's appropriate for them to say, look, I'm going to a school with someone's name on it. It's appropriate for me to learn if the name on this school, if the name of this, if I'm walking into a building and the name on this building is someone that used to own slaves, is someone who was a segregationist. I think but that's don't appropriate we have to, to know. But don't they have to understand the context the of history. the time in which that person lived? Isn't that, does that relative? Make it right? but does, does that make it correct? And, and you have I mean, to negate that, every other that, good thing that the person might, may have done. Well, how, do, how would you feel about that? I mean, if someone did all of the, did certain things that in one community feels is good but had it did an affront to your family your personally you would probably feel concerned about taking part in anything with that person's name on it same thing for an african-american I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, 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 I mean think I about the that? think about the leaders who you know weren't in favor of women voting for years am i going to want them erased from history because right. of that viewpoint but then, well, well, but then the, didn't but allow the black thing. people to work in government uh, virginia <laughs> would be can't. very busy trying to get rid of everything that has Robert Byrd's name on it, streets, roads, buildings. He was a known 
Ku Klux Klan member. He was a recruiter, a grand Klegel. I don't know what you have to do to be that. But listen, you, you can't whitewash <laughs> history. And what these students need, they need to be in class, first of all. And they need to learn about history and then figure out how to ind an individual like Robert Byrd, for example, get into that kind of a position of notoriety. Well, I find that outrageous. Well, I, I will Good say point. this. One of the things that I think uh, needs to come out is that college campuses are incredibly appropriate to have this conversation. If you're going to talk about history in its full context, if you're going to have a real conversation about it, there's no better place to do but it. Are they getting both sides conference. of the debate? They're, they're not. Getting both sides. They're but they're intimidating the people. They're rushing the president's office at Princeton to demand things. They're going into that library at Dartmouth, mm -hmm. uh, you know, silencing students who are trying to study and, and get an education. Well, and at Williams, the president said he was very upset because they wouldn't let a, um, a woman speak on campus who was against feminism, and he was upset about it. I'm thinking, aren't you the president of the university? There's well, nothing you can do? This has been going do. on even before the Vietnam protests on college campus. This, there's nothing new about what we're seeing here. What is new is that you have more and more people of color in particular doing this and fighting back and pushing back against what they believe, and I, and I think there's, some, there's truth to this, that you have you, the, these colleges are in many ways have a history that needs to be put in its context, and some of that context may be uncomfortable for some, but it needs to be discussed. Basil, thank you very much. Janine, Thanks, great Mark. to see you as always. Good to see you.